Thank you for joining us today. Please like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Good morning, Ebenezer family. We are here to gather to bring the praise and glory to his name. Let us go to the altar in prayer. Dear Lord, we lift your name and give you all the prayer and praise that we have to give. We are celebrating Christian Education Sunday. And dear Lord, during these times, this is a time that we really need you. This is a time to educate our children, our youth, our adults, and our seniors. Our country and world is going through a lot of things and a lot of misinformation is out there. We need to be there to guide and give the facts to our children and families so they would know what they need to do to stay safe. Because your Lord, your word is what we're here to do and your work is what we need to do. We need to have faith in the practice of medicine, science, and by all means the faith in prayer. We know that once we pray before you and put it at the altar, you will handle it. Guide us to give us the clearance of that we need to think about the things we have to think about do the things we have to do, and have the patience to wait until you say it's our time. Dear Lord, we ask that you be with all of our families that are present here and those who are streaming in before your presence has gone out into the airways and you're touching everybody's families and their hearts. Dear Lord, bless them, keep them, give them your mercy and grace. Give us the strength to move forward in these unknowing times. And dear Lord, help us to stay together as a family. Help us to continue to build on this rock of Zion that we have been here for so long. Help us to keep going forward and doing the things in your word and help us to be out there to show everyone what you can do and what your people can do with you as they lead their light in their life. Give us grace and mercy. Give us clear voyage to see where we need to go and keep us humble so that we know that we are all servants of you. These things we ask in your son's name. Amen.
Good morning to the Ebenezer Baptist Church family. Truly, it is a privilege and an honor to be in worship with one another once again. God has blessed us. God continues to bless us. Uh, the, the, the good people used to say in our tradition, God is good all of the time. And all of the time, God is good. And we affirm that on this day, trusting and believing that God has given us this one more opportunity for a reason. Uh, not only that we might come together, but we might equip ourselves to serve uh, so that men and women, boys and girls, might be better because we've spent this time in worship with one another. Let me welcome all of our friends and guests who might be tuning in to our worship experience on this day, however you might be watching and or listening. We are grateful for your presence, and we do hope and pray that there is something said and or done that will be a blessing to you, that it might inspire and encourage you, that it might give you a little wind beneath your wings as you go into the week that is ahead. We are truly grateful. Uh, although we cannot extend the kind of hospitality that we would show you if you were to walk through the doors of our building, we pray that you have felt the love of this congregation through what you have heard and seen uh, by way of our worship experience. Let me also take a moment to thank uh, all of you, my uh, b beloved Ebenezer family, for your continued investment in the life of this congregation. We celebrate that you not only give of your money, we celebrate that you give of your time as well. There are so many of you, so many members of Ebenezer, working behind the scenes, volunteering, doing uh, this, that, and the other to make sure that we are providing the kinds of ministry with which God is pleased, of which God is pleased. And so we are grateful that you have blessed us by way of your time, your hands, your heart, as well as your financial contributions. I thank you. I know it's been a challenge not to have someone bringing the, the tray uh, right to you on your favorite pew, uh, but you have still remained faithful in your giving. Uh, you have mailed checks, you have dropped off your contributions at the door, as well as brought them into the office. And some of you have become so good at tapping on your phone or your computer, you have mastered our Givelify app. And so as we uh, move into the remainder of the year, I encourage you, please continue to give because we are doing good work. And as you give, trust and believe that God sees you, God knows your heart, and God is blessing you for the work that you do by way of your giving and your sharing. I need to encourage us as well. Uh, we are in the early voting season. I need to encourage us because I, I, I don't know what the psychology is uh, among people uh, in the United States, but uh, sometimes we act as if it's not a presidential election. It's not as important. But you and I both know that when these elections come around for state and local offices, those are the persons who are making decisions primarily about your day to day experiences. Those are the persons that we place in office or uh, they may be the persons we don't place in office if we're not voting who end up in power making decisions about how our cities, our towns, our counties and our state functions. And it's so important that we pay just as much attention to how we research and inform ourselves to vote in this election as we would in any other election. I've got to tell you, it is so important that we do this. So I encourage you, call someone, text someone, email someone. Make sure that you know, uh, uh, that you contact at least three people or so and remind them of how important it is that they pay attention to this election cycle. Don't pay attention to the polls just because the polls tell you that this person might win or that person might win does not mean anything until you show up and do your part as a citizen and cast your ballot for the candidate that you have uh, for whom you have researched and uh, informed yourself, done your homework so that you might know those person's platforms and that you might know that you are making the best decision based on your conscience and how the spirit is leading you. Contact the, your city or county registrar, 
Find out what the hours are if you plan to participate in early voting. If not, and you're waiting until November, then do uh, your due diligence between now and then to inform yourself and be prepared to cast your ballot. It does matter. It does matter. I invite you to uh, pray for our church and our world. Please continue to pray for the sick and shut-in members of this congregation. You've seen the list on your newsletter, uh, whether you've received it by way of a paper copy in the mail or whether you've received it by your electronic version. Please, please, please pray for each other. Let us show our love by how we pray for each other. And I encourage you, keep calling, keep sending cards during this time. Someone needs to know that you are thinking about her or him. So see the newsletter, check on it, do your, uh, open up your directory, find the address, find the phone number, call, write, uh, let that person know that uh, she or he is loved and cared for and that your call, your words will be an expression of God's love for our family. We are looking forward to Men's Day. Uh, please keep watching the newsletter for any information that might come about that. Uh, we'll pray for our men as they prepare for us, as they provide leadership in that service, and as we celebrate their service to our congregation. Let me point now your attention to the flowers that are on the pulpit. The flowers lending beauty and grace to our altar this morning have been given to us by the Reverend Brenda B. Somerset, our assistant pastor and minister of, of congregational care, in memory of her mother's 97th birthday, Mrs. Lessie Kitty Blake, which is on October 3rd. So the family writes, we continue to treasure her life and legacy of love and faith. We also honor all Christian education workers and Brother Levon Johnson for the awesome work that they continue to do. Reverend Somerset and the Blake family. Which leads me as well to celebrate our Christian education ministry, all of the workers, teachers, all of the ministry members who have done their work so well behind the scenes, whether it was not a pandemic or whether it is a pandemic. They have continued to be faithful in their service, and we've been able to do some tremendous things, as you, uh, as you well know. So we thank God for our Christian education ministry. We thank God for our Christian education servants, and we appreciate all of the ways in which they bless us by way of their time, energy, and commitment. Now it's the first Sunday, so I got to get excited now because you know what's on the way. I want to say happy birthday to all of our October birthday members and happy anniversary to all of our October couples. God bless you. God keep you. May you celebrate many, many, many more. And here's that wonderful selection from our kids, our, the birthday songs. Uh, please, please, please get up, clap with them, sing with them, and enjoy uh, for all of you celebrating birthdays, enjoy being serenaded, so to speak, on this, your birthday month. God bless you and keep you.
Good morning. Today we are here to celebrate and honor God as we observe Christian Education Sunday. The Christian Education Ministry of this church serves as a teaching and equipping ministry. This morning, I want to recognize individuals who have carried out the mission and vision of our Christian Education Ministry. First, the Superintendent of Church School, Brother Vernon Clement. Mr. Vernon Clement has been superintendent since 2019. Mr. Clement has demonstrated perseverance during this pandemic to reimagine our church school. During church school monthly meetings, Mr. Clement encouraged teachers to rethink their method of teaching using new technology as the Zoom video platform. Training sessions were held via Zoom for current and new teachers. Literature and teaching aids were distributed to teachers and students. A mass class was held in October and December 2020 to identify potential problems with the new technology. On January 3rd, 2021, five breakout classes began. Since then, classroom enrollments have steadily increased. Thank you, Brother Clement, for your vision for our church school. Brother Clemens, I present you this performance award certificate. The following individuals will receive a certificate of appreciation. Our church school teachers. These are the teachers and individuals who have used their talents and gifts from God to carry out the mission and vision of our church school. They are Barco Carter class led by Deacon Leroy Sally, brothers Vernon Wildey and Vernon Clement. Gleaners led by Sister Marion Gerard and Deacon Sandra Reed. Christian Growth and Fellowship led by Deacon Lillian Carter and Sister Geraldine Neely. Christian Sharing, TEL, led by Reverend Somerset and Deacon Thomas Epps. Youth One and Two, led by Sister Kim Tyler, Brother Joshua Neely, and Dr. Rhonda Bond. Children's Church, led by a host of teachers, Kimberly Clement, Cassandra Callender Ray, Joshua Neely, Allegra Simmons, Reverend Catherine Narl, Barbara Howlett, Diane Mason, Antoinette Smith, Cheryl Burke, and Samaj Braddock. Co chairpersons of our scholarship committee, Mona Mallory and Cuvada Bailey. Early on during this pandemic, the scholarship committee met with our new pastor to introduce its membership and its purpose. This committee continued to provide scholarships and book awards to our college bound students. This year, the committee announces its academic community tuition scholarship under the Smith Pool Scholarship Fund for students in the Richmond public school system living in the Carver, Gilpin Court and Jackson Ward communities. Their tenacity is worthy to be recognized. Girl Scout Troop Leader, Sister Glennis Fleming. Girl Scout Troops 34, 35, and 415 have always been active in the church and the Richmond Metro community. However, during this pandemic, their activities have been limited. Sister Fleming didn't want to lose contact with the girls and their parents. Several activities were conducted via Zoom platform for the girls to continue to earn their badges or patches. 
An average of 15 scout members participated in each activity. Sister Fleming's leadership skills and resourcefulness is worthy of recognition. Our mantra comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. It reads, Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Good morning. My name is Josiah Neely, and I will be reading from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. And it reads, All scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Ebenezer, we thank God for all of our worship participants on this day. Thank you to Sister Tiller, to Young Master Josiah Neely, Sister Yvette Walker, as well as our chair of our Christian Education Ministry, Brother Levon Johnson Sr., uh, for all of his planning behind the scenes for his leadership of the Christian Education Ministry. I'm so grateful, again, I say to all of our teachers and our servant leaders who have given so much of their time and energy for the work of the church. May God continue to bless you for all that you do on behalf of this congregation and in the name of our Lord. We thank as well our children's choir for providing that beautiful selection of happy birthday as well as our young adult choir on this day. We're grateful as well to our media, and music, uh, our media team and our musicians. And as well, we uh, acknowledge the service and leadership of all of our officers, all of our servant leaders in this congregation, our ministerial team, as well as our staff. God bless you all. We are so grateful for our preacher on this Christian Education Sunday. I am delighted to introduce you to the Reverend Jacqueline Colbert. Reverend Jackie, or as we used to call her back when I was growing up, Titi, because she was an auntie to us all. The Reverend Jacqueline Colbert is first and foremost a dedicated servant of God. She is a native of Gary, Indiana, who came to Virginia by way of Madison, Wisconsin, where she was one of my youth ministers at the Mount Zion Baptist Church in Madison. In August of 2017, she felt called to the ministry of the chaplaincy, and she began and completed her chaplaincy education at Centera Norfolk General Hospital. The following year, after her completion, after completing the program, she became a member of the chaplaincy staff at Centera Lee Hospital in, New in Norfolk, and she is now the team coordinator for chaplaincy services at that facility. Reverend Colbert is an ordained minister in the American Baptist Churches USA. Her licensure and ordination were conferred upon her by the Mount Zion Baptist Church of Madison. She served as associate minister there for almost 20 years. Her call to ministry was the culmination of years of service within the Mount Zion Church family. She was a musician, a choir director, a prayer ministry member, a coordinator for the youth ministry, a Sunday school teacher, a Bible study instructor, and a coordinator for weekly Wednesday prayer meeting. In addition to that, she used to make the best lemon meringue pie you have ever tasted. She is a graduate of the University of Wisconsin-Madison with a degree, a bachelor's degree in music, vocal performance, a Master of Divinity graduate of the Central Baptist Theological Seminary of Shawnee, Kansas. She took classes at the Milwaukee site of Central Baptist. She was active, moreover, 
within, the, within American Baptist life, serving on the region staff, staff for a season, as well as serving as the state president for the American Baptist Churches of Wisconsin until her move to Virginia. She continues to serve in the local church. She is an associate minister at the New Hope Baptist Church in Chesapeake, Virginia, where the Reverend Dr. Sammy Logan III is the pastor. Reverend Jackie Colbert has been married for 24 years to her high school sweetheart, Roy Colbert. Reverend Jackie and her husband Roy are the proud parents of one son, Jaden, who uh, is truly an answer to prayer and now a high school junior in the Chesapeake area high schools. Let me share with you just on a personal note why I'm so delighted that she's here. Uh, hopefully I have communicated that I, uh, I really admire, respect, and love this woman of God. Uh, I trusted her, loved her so much for her mentoring and her guiding presence in my journey uh, that she was the first person I told that I had bought an engagement ring for then Rhonda Monice Smith. And I shared with Reverend Jackie that I was going to marry that woman. And she gave me the kind of guidance, counsel, and prayer that blessed me to have the clarity and discerning spirit to begin to really take the steps to get myself prepared to be the uh, husband that God was calling me to be for my beautiful wife. I thank God for Reverend Colbert's ministry in my life as well as her ministry within the community throughout the years wherever she has found herself. Truly she is called by God and we look forward to her sharing on this day as she blesses us with the word. Please pray for her. Pray for her, pray with her, and trust that God will bless us by way of the word that we hear on this day. We'll hear now the music, and following that, we'll hear as well the preacher for this morning, the Reverend Jacqueline Colbert. May God bless her as she shares with us. Amen.
morning to the people of God and to the Ebenezer Baptist Church family. I greet you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I thank your pastor, the Reverend Dr. Adam Bond, for that very warm and personal welcome and introduction. And I love the opportunity to be able to stand in this sacred space and proclaim God's word on today. It's such a blessing for me to be here with you all and also to be in the presence of he and his wife who are treasures in my heart. So I just want to again thank God for this opportunity. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just thank you and we praise you for the blessing and the gift of life upon this day. We thank you, Lord, for your abiding presence as we journey day by day through life. And we thank you, Lord, for your promise that you would never leave us nor forsake us. So thank you, God, for your manifest presence with us in all that we encounter in these turbulent times. I ask you, God, to just touch your people's heart right now. We thank you for the worship that has gone forward, Lord God. We pray that that worship till the soil of their hearts so that this word might fall on good soil, Lord God, and take root and be a transforming word for these, your people. Lord, I ask you for your, as your servant that you would just hide me behind the cross. Anoint me for the task that is before me. Use me for your glory, Lord God. I ask you, God, to speak through me to be a blessing unto your people. These things we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen and amen. I ask you to think with me for a few moments from this topic, thoroughly equipped, thoroughly equipped. So as we prepare to dive into this text and the message for today, allow me a few moments for full disclosure about me. I am a baby, a student, and a product of the Sunday school. Sunday school was never an option in my home. We may have missed morning worship on a Sunday that me and my sisters didn't have to sing, but we never missed Sunday school. Both of my parents were Sunday school teachers, both taught in the children's division of the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church in Gary, Indiana at 2300 Grant Street. <laughs> And both of them had additional roles. My mother served as the secretary treasurer for the children's division, collecting our offering each Sunday morning where we were taught to give unto the Lord. And in addition to being a teacher, my father was the assistant superintendent of the children's division. And each Sunday, at the conclusion of Sunday school, my father would dismiss us with the scripture. He would say, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. From 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. It was one of the first scriptures of any sizable length that I learned, and it is still ingrained in me today and continues to remain hidden in my heart. This great appreciation for God's word, for the Holy Scripture, and the instruction, the necessity to read, to study, to meditate, and hide God's word in our hearts as disciples of Christ is a consistent theme throughout the epistles of Timothy. Timothy is reminded to remember all that he has been taught despite the circumstances, despite the false teaching. He's reminded to remember all that he's been taught all that he's been taught by his mother Eunice, all that he's been taught by his grandmother Lois, and all that he's been taught by his father in the ministry, Paul. Paul encourages Timothy to stand strong in his faith with a definite reliance on the written word of God. And in our text for today, Paul is charging Timothy to be thoroughly equipped so that he can remain faithful and true to the word of God and the teachings of Jesus Christ. And I come to tell you this morning that Paul's charge is true for us today, amen? In the turbulent times we are living in, we cannot allow our faith and our witness to be swayed by false doctrines, false teachings, 
misinterpretations of God's word, the opinions of others, or things we may see on social media. We must have the knowledge and the truth of God's word hidden in our hearts and live with reliance on that word. Amen? Amen. As believers and disciples of Jesus Christ, we have the responsibility to learn and grow in our Christian discipleship. It is wonderful and truly a blessing when we open our hearts and accept the free gift of salvation. But we can't get stuck on Savior. We cannot accept salvation and go sit down somewhere waiting for Jesus to come back. No, our responsibility as born again believers only begins there to become the hands, the feet, the eyes and the mouthpieces used by God, we must be actively working to become thoroughly equipped as disciples to execute the ministry each believer is called to and charged with. For we have all been called to service. Amen? Amen. Amen. That takes work. That takes submission. And that takes intentional preparation. So I propose to you this morning that when we are consistently students of God's word and partakers of the spiritual disciplines, we become thoroughly equipped for every good work. When we are consistently students of God's word and partakers of the spiritual disciplines, we become thoroughly equipped for every good work thoroughly equipped. First of all, we must be students of God's word. Paul begins by saying all scripture is God breathed. There is no question as to who provides the scripture. And by stating all scripture, Paul is emphasizing the inclusion of more than just the Hebrew scriptures. Paul says all to include the New Testament that comes forth through the apostles, which fulfills the promise Jesus made that the Holy Spirit would speak to the apostles and lead them into all truth. So we are to learn and study the God-breathed word in its entirety. We cannot pick and choose certain passages of scripture that coincide with our opinions or to support a point we are trying to make. We must expose our hearts and minds to the truth of God in its entirety. And as the Greek scholar Dean Alfred put it, every part of scripture is all inspired and all profitable, which means it is useful for us. It is profitable for doctrine, telling us what is true about God humankind, about the world we live in and the world to come. It is profitable for teaching as we do in Sunday school and Bible study and other educational opportunities in the local church. It is profitable for reproof and correction with the authority to rebuke us and correct us. For example, Matthew 7, 1 and 2 tells us, do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And the measure you use, it will be measured to you. So it's used to rebuke us. It is profitable for instruction in righteousness. It tells us how to live in true righteousness. The result or design of the scripture is the growth and the perfection of the believer in life and in service. I think I need to say that again. The result or design of the scripture is the growth and the perfection of the believer in life and in service. We become equipped in knowledge. We become equipped in faith. We become equipped in holiness. We become equipped in wisdom and guidance through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. This knowledge this understanding and inspiration ascertained through consistent reading, study, and meditation of the God-breathed word is an essential component of our Christian discipleship. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. amen. Hallelujah, Lord God. 
However, it is not enough just to be students of God's word. Right. To become thoroughly equipped, we must also be partakers of the spiritual disciplines. You might ask, what is a spiritual discipline? Well, the spiritual disciplines are the God-given means we are to use in the spirit-filled pursuit of godliness, of holiness, of righteousness, of Christ-likeness. And just as the athlete trains his or her body, so the Christian must train his or her soul. Physical training only develop, develops part of a person, and it produces results which only last for a short time, for the body passes away. But training in godliness develops the entire person in body, in mind, and in spirit, and it results affect not only time, but eternity as well. It equips us to be the envoys that Paul is charging Timothy to be in our text today. The spiritual disciplines are those personal and corporate disciplines that promote spiritual growth. They are the habits of devotion and experiential Christianity that have been practiced by the people of God since biblical times. Spiritual disciplines are ways we can place ourselves in the path of God's grace and seek God for ourselves. Spiritual disciplines are important so that we as Christians can have much power to produce much fruit. So many professing Christians are so spiritually undisciplined and as a result malnourished that they seem to have little fruit and little power in their lives or their ministries. If you can't say amen, say ouch. That's all right. The mere presence of spiritual gifts does not guarantee abundant fruitfulness. Just as with natural gifts, like singing is for me, spiritual gifts must be developed by discipline in order to bear spiritual fruit. So we need spiritual disciplines, these spiritual exercises, so that we as disciples of Christ can bear much fruit for the glory of God. Spiritual disciplines must become priorities for us as Christians, as disciples of Christ, and as God's envoys. Richard Foster, in his book, Celebration of Discipline, lists many spiritual disciplines, including Bible intake and that Bible study that I've been talking about. But also prayer. How's your prayer life? Not just praying before your meal. How's your prayer life? Fasting. Turn down that plate so that we can hear more intimately from God. Worship where we come and gather to give God praise, honor, and glory. Evangelism, meditation, stewardship, our giving unto the Lord. Silence, so we can hear from God. Solitude, so we can be in God's presence and not be distracted by the things around us. Submission, service, and learning, to name a few. This is not an exhaustive list, but a mere reflection of those disciplines deemed essential for continuous spiritual growth towards godliness. And in addition to Bible study, we must also include spiritual disciplines to become equipped, thoroughly equipped, to be Christ's disciples and God's change agents in the world. So if we are faithful as students of God's word and we faithfully engage in the spiritual disciplines, then we will emerge thoroughly equipped for every good work. Paul ends our text today with this encouragement to Timothy that if he stands firm in his faith and maintains his reliance on God's word, he will be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And Eugene Peterson, in the message version of this text, translates every good work as the task God has for us. So as Paul charged Timothy, I charge you today on this Christian Education Sunday to let God use you 
for every good work. God has equipped each of us to complete the task he has for us, for his glory and for the furthering of his kingdom here on earth. So hear me today. Let the Lord use you. Let the Lord use you. Let him use you to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Let him use you to teach the word of God to young and old alike. Let him use you to encourage others along this Christian journey. That's the beauty of the fellowship in the body of Christ. Let him use you as his intercessor, praying for others, praying for families, praying for our children, praying for ministries, praying for communities, praying for pastors, praying for the church of Jesus Christ, praying for our country, praying for the world, praying for the unsaved, that they may come to know Jesus Christ in the pardon of their sin. Let him use you. Let him use you in the evangelism ministry. Let him use you in the homeless ministry. Let him use you in feeding the hungry and clothing those who are unclothed. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for the honor and the privilege to be your envoys and to be your servant. The songwriter says, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord. Take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord. Speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Is that your testimony this morning? Are you willing and submitted to be used by God for his glory and the furthering of his kingdom here on on, on earth? So let him use you for every good work, knowing that you are undergirded with the word of God and empowered through the Holy Spirit. And as a result, you are thoroughly equipped for the task before you. God bless you and keep you is my prayer. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts to go down from this worship experience, but never from God's presence. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen, amen, and amen.